of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. I want to welcome all of you, those of you who are participating in our worship via our video link as we celebrate this, the second Sunday of Advent. Though mountains may fall and crooked railroads straighten for you, human hearts are slow to respond to the herald of God's approach. And so we call to mind our own captivity to sin and pray for freedom. Lord Jesus, in your name we are baptized, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in your name we bear witness, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your name we make ready your way, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. With tender comfort and transforming power, you Come into our midst, O God of mercy and might. Make ready a way in the wilderness. Clear a straight path in our hearts and form us into a repentant people that the advent of your Son may find us watchful and eager for the glory Christ reveals. We ask this through the one whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Awake to the day of the coming of the Lord, sing out, Rejoice in this land. Make straight the way for the kingdom of God is at hand. Awake, 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 awake to the day. Amen. 
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of God shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of good tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Let me taste your mercy like rain on my face. Here in my life, show me your peace. Let us see with our own eyes your day breaking bright. Come, O oh morning, come. Let me taste your mercy like rain on my face. Here in my life, show me your peace. Let us see with our own eyes your day breaking bright. Come, O oh morning. What God has spoken, I will declare peace to the people of God everywhere. God's saving presence is close at hand. Glory as near as our land. Let me taste your mercy like rain on my face. Here in my life, show me your peace. Let us see with our own eyes your day breaking bright. Come, O oh morning, come.
dear faithful love and truth will embrace. Here peace and justice will come face to face. God's truth shall water the earth like a spring, while justice will bend down and sing. Let me taste your mercy like rain on my face. Here in my life, show me your peace. Let us see with our own eyes, your day breaking bright. Come, O morning, come, O light. God will keep the promise indeed. Our land will yield the food that we need. Justice shall walk before you that day, clearing a path, preparing your way. Let me taste your A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be? conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Lord. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to meet John and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what John proclaimed, one mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. May I ask you a question? Have you ever received a letter that was so touching, a letter that was so moving, that you decided to keep it? A letter that you find yourself returning over and again to read its words, to ponder its message? Well, that's how I feel about today's first scripture reading. Think of the words you just heard, the words, comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. After all, who here couldn't use a little more comfort? Amen to that. And with these words of comfort from God, Isaiah announces that the time of the Jews' exile in Babylon is coming soon to an end. Soon and very soon, yes indeed, soon and very soon. You see, things were changing quite rapidly in Isaiah's world. In the east, the Persians were rising to power. And the days of Babylonian dominance were beginning to be numbered. But Isaiah tells his fellow Jews to look beyond the politics of the times and see in all that was happening the hand of God at work on their behalf. Comfort, give comfort to my people. For Isaiah saw Persia's King Cyrus as God's chosen instrument, the one God would use to set the Jews free. Indeed, Isaiah went so far as to depict God calling the pagan ruler Cyrus my shepherd who fulfills my every wish and 
my anointed, whose right hand I grasp. Now think of this. Here we have a pagan ruler being called God's shepherd and God's anointed. That's a big wow. That's a capital W, capital O, capital W, wow. Don't you think? Indeed, Isaiah tells his fellow Jews that not only would God use Cyrus to ensure the release of the Jews from their exile in Babylon, but Isaiah goes on to say that God himself would lead their way through the desert back to Jerusalem. And God would do this, Isaiah says, by his power and might. A power and a might that would level the road from Babylon to Jerusalem. A power and a might that would fill in the valleys and bring down the mountains, thereby preparing a way, thereby preparing a level path on which the chosen people would travel home. You know, as I hear all of this, all of this talk of mountains being leveled and valleys being filled in. My vision sees a mighty bulldozer at work. My vision sees God as this mighty bulldozer. Another wow, don't you think? And as the prophets suggest a tremendous road construction project, we gathered today, might ask ourselves, what road work needs to be done in our own lives? What valleys, what empty places need to be filled in? What mountains, what obstacles to God in our lives need to be leveled? What rough edges in our hearts need a little smoothing? But then... Look what happens. Isaiah's imagery shifts. It shifts from God as a mighty bulldozer to God as a gentle shepherd. A gentle shepherd caring for his sheep. Isaiah writes, Like a shepherd he feeds his flock. In his arms he gathers the lambs carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with tender care. And with these two images, that of God as a mighty bulldozer and that of God as a gentle shepherd, Isaiah lets God be God in all and for all. Isaiah shows us that God has the power to bring newness where none seemed possible. And that God's love and God's care can make the new happen. And with these words of Isaiah, certainly in mind, St. Mark begins his gospel by signaling that God is again doing something new with the coming of Jesus. A new era is beginning. A new covenant is being formed. And a new people are called together. For once again, the world was stuck in its old sinful and destructive ways. And so God responds by declaring something new. But here's the difference 
between what God did in Isaiah's time and what God was doing in St. Mark's time. For those who accept Jesus will be given the power of the Spirit to break through all the dead ends of life. With Jesus, old habits and old ways no longer have to continue limiting us. For Jesus Christ has begun something new for us, and he will, as John said, baptize you with the Holy Spirit so that we will always have the new life that Jesus' coming has begun. And so, St. Mark begins his gospel by announcing what? By announcing a new prophet named John, a holy man sent by God to prepare the way in the desert for the coming Messiah, to once again level the mountains and fill in the valleys. As Jesus' predecessor, John has been commissioned by God to prepare a way, a way that is not so much involved with crossing various lands and different borders, a way that moves into the heart. To welcome the coming Messiah, John challenged his listeners to repentance, to conversion, and to a new way of living. Yes, John saw his baptism as the outward sign of inner conversion. And his baptism made people think of their ancestors passing through the divided waters of the Red Sea. So would God, John's disciples pass through the baptismal waters of repentance to prepare themselves to meet and welcome the Son of God. So, what happened at the Red Sea anticipated what was now happening at the Jordan River. And what happens even today at each and every baptismal fount. Watch! And as one enters the baptismal fount, you will see the waters part. St. Mark goes on to cast John as a true prophet by mentioning his strange diet. A diet, we are told, that consisted of locusts and wild honey the locusts symbolizing judgment, the wild honey symbolizing comfort. Comfort ye my people. Why do I say that? Well, remember in Exodus how we read that the plague of lotus was regarded as God's instrument bringing what? Bringing judgment upon the Egyptian people. On the opposite side, the wild honey that was found so much in abundance in the promised land, the wild honey signified not judgment, but a time of peace and a time of plenty. The land of milk and honey Thank God for all the cows and all the bees. So wild locusts, and honey helped to announce the dual nature of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus, which would announce judgment as well as peace and comfort. Again, comfort ye my people. And until Jesus' return in glory, John's message is to be heard. Repent and prepare the way of the Lord. But how are we to do this in this Advent season? Well, 
If the viral pandemic has taught us anything, it has taught us to value our relationships with one another. And while the practice of social distancing may be the norm at this time, let it not keep us from finding new ways to express our care and affection for family and friends. And with so many unemployed and in need, maybe we could step up our generosity in supporting the various organizations that are reaching out to help others. And while this past year has seen a renewed discussion on the issues of racism, an issue that still tends to divide we, the people, maybe this Advent we could spend some time reflecting on our own thoughts regarding how we think and how we feel about people of other races, people who speak other languages and people who practice other religions. Change can occur, yes, but only when each person seeks change within their own hearts. You see, as a gospel people, as a community that exists in Jesus' name, we must continue to work for peace and justice and truth. And as we do, let the words of Isaiah bring to you comfort. Comfort ye, my people, says the Lord. Comfort ye, my people. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Knowing the times in which we are living, let us pray that our deeds will take on the light of Christ's love. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. <laughs> May the church herald the glad tidings of Christ's coming. Lift up, O oh church, this world to come. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. For those who call the world to conversion, setting aside greed and violence. Lift up, O oh church, this world to come. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. For the poor and all who bring them good news. Lift up, O oh church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. For the sick whose names we remember. Lift up, O oh church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. We remember those who have died. 
by remembering their names. Lift up, O oh church, this world to come. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. Holy God, your glory fills creation with light and life. Stay with us and make us ever brighter signs of your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name. For the good, the good of all his holy church. Accept, Lord, our offerings chosen from among your many gifts, and let this present expression of our reverence become for us the pledge of eternal redemption. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For Jesus assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when Jesus comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, Jesus opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, and the chalice of blessing. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, renew your church in Mesa by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. 
together with Francis, our Pope, with Thomas and Eduardo, our bishops, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with our patroness, St. Bridget, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us turn and offer some sign of Christ's peace to one another.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord our God, grant that in our journey through this passing world, we may learn from these mysteries to cherish even now the things of heaven and to cling to the treasures that never pass away. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. A voice cries out in the wilderness, is like grass and its flowers. The grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but the word of the Lord is forever. A voice cries out,
shalt draw. 